start over again? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, video was uh, produced by, uh, 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 was at the behest of John Marco Sanna, who is a collaborator uh, of the Schiller Institute in Europe. He's based in the UK, however, he has worked with the, uh, performed with the Schiller Institute uh, in Berlin. And he uh, is in, uh, works with a group uh, called the uh, Camerata Gemignani, and they have started what's called the Gemignani Project, which has been performing at the Verdi Tuning. You can look at their website, which is called GemignaniProject.com. Uh, you can look up their work. Um, he has a collaborator in Brazil, uh, Tony Mazzotti, I just wanna have, make sure I have it right, um, who has also been working with Gianmarco and uh, has produced a wonderful short video of uh, uh, just giving a kind of a summary of the work that, that we have been doing over the last 20, 25 years now uh, to get the tuning back to something that actually helps and doesn't hurt the human voice and the human ear and the human soul. Uh, so I'd like to introduce that video and play that video now. Sono molto onorato che voi abbiate accettato questo mio invito a partecipare a questa riunione. I did find a letter of Giuseppe Verdi written to the music committee establishing a pitch for orchestras in Italy in that year. If this is the scientific tuning, music is a universal language, so we should have the same tuning for all orchestra, and let's adopt it. Based on this letter, the Schiller Institute has launched a resolution which was endorsed by 2,000 singers, including Pavarotti, Renata Tebaldi, Piero Capuccilli, Mirella Freni, Alfredo Kraus, I mean the most famous singers endorse this campaign. Who knows, maybe the Verdi tuning will be part of the general change of society which we all look forward to. Most people are not aware of them, consciously. They may be affected by them, but they're not really aware of them. The Schiller Institute took up this fight around this question of the right tuning, Giuseppe Verdi's insistence, legislation passed in Italy. There are many reasons for this, health of the human voice, although that's an important aspect of it. Vogliamo fare un esempio? We have to lower the tuning, otherwise we will never have great voices again. Every town in Italy has a street or square named after the great opera composer Giuseppe Verdi. Verdi turned grand opera into nationalist propaganda. Verdi, the national hero, was elected deputy in the Italian parliament. I have to say that here, 
quando ho provato il 432 per me è stata una scoperta piacevole del suono, del colore, della voce e rispetto anche per lo strumento vocale. It was amazing the difference and how much more round the music was with the Verdi tuning. Las contraltos y los tenores están desapareciendo. Salían sangrando la gente de ópera que cantaba, ¿sabe? La voz sufre muchísimo menos. Una ópera que puede durar dos o tres horas, al final acaban algunos sangrando. Por eso que se decía la gran voz verdiana. Now I would like to hand it over to Carmela Altamora. Okay. Yes, you are. Carmela, when do you want to play the Cappuccini video first? Or, or the, I want to play the whole video with Cappuccini. Please. You want to do that now? Yes. Let's do that now. Yes. Okay, before we do it. So let's, this is the, although you saw a little clip of it, this is the, the uh, more complete uh, 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 recording of that 19, famous 1988 demonstration. And you'll see uh, Renata Tabaldi sitting next to him and uh, on, on the, seated next to him. You'll see that. Okay, can we run that video now? Mentre arriva Piero Capuccilli, giusto in tempo. Cappuccilli wurde vom Publikum ähnlich gefeiert wie die Tebalden. Cappuccilli, der, wie gerade zu hören war, keinerlei Probleme mit den hohen Tönen hat, demonstrierte praktisch, was seine große Kollegin Tebaldi, die seit elf Jahren ihre aktive Sängerlaufbahn beendet hat, am frühen Nachmittag erläutert hatte. Dass die viel zu hohe Stimmung zur Folge hat, dass die menschliche Stimme enorm an Volumen und Färbung verliert, weil sie nicht richtig sitzt. Außerdem werden die Sänger gezwungen, an den falschen Stellen das Register zu wechseln. Eine musikalische Sinnlosigkeit. Cappuccilli benutzte zwei Beispiele, in denen sich die Stimme, wie er erklärte, um den Registerwechsel von der Mittellage zum hohen Register bewegt. Zuerst aus Verdis Oper Ernani, einmal in tiefer Stimmung A 432. Dann in hoher Stimmung A 440.
Wie war's besser? Keine Frage, in der tieferen Stimmung. Zur besseren Illustration noch einmal. Ich habe viel mehr Farbe, meinte Cappuccini. Danach aus Verdis Troubadour zuerst tief. Dann hoch. Das überzeugte das Publikum und natürlich durfte der Dank an den großen Verdi nicht fehlen. <lacht> 